Hey there, did you ever hike on top of a mountain in the Alps all by yourself and thought, hey, I should make some lamb stefado? Well, let me tell you, you've come to the right video. It's quite an easy dish. However, it takes time, like any good pot roast or stew. Let's begin by marinating our meat. Now traditionally, this stefado seems to be prepared with beef, so you can use that if you like. I had bought some lamb shoulder, and these are the rest of the ingredients you'll need for the marinade. A cinnamon bark, some cloves, some bay leaves, olive oil and red wine. I had some Spanish Tempranillo because I couldn't get any non-sweet Greek wine. Also chopped garlic, which I forgot to show here. Okay, first we need to wash and pat the meat dry before trimming the silver skin and sinews. While we cook the meat for some time, it might not be enough to get those tender. Just cut off anything you don't like. I'm no expert when it comes to cutting meat, so I might have used the wrong knife or technique, but in the end, the result was perfectly fine. Meaning, I didn't waste too much meat by trimming. Alrighty, we'll mix it with our seasoning ingredients and I'll chop up the garlic which I had forgotten. I covered it with foil and let it sit in the fridge overnight. But I'm sure you could theoretically let it marinate for less time. You know, if you are in a hurry. Let's say a couple of hours should do. Today is tomorrow and I'm excited to get cooking. But first we need to separate the meat from its marinade. So I did just that with a way too large meat fork. Don't toss the marinade, we'll use that later. Speaking of which, here are the ingredients we need down the line. And as always, the amounts I use are in the description. First a couple of onions. And when researching, I realized the original recipe uses either pearl onions or shallots. Guess what I bought? Plain old onions. Oh well, it worked fine. And if you can get the others, you know. So uh, back to the ingredients. Lamb stock or any other stock you can get. Tomato paste olive oil and I had two different kinds of thyme, lemon thyme and regular one. Lemon thyme is really amazing since it smells and tastes kind of like a, you know, lemon and some salt and pepper as usual. At this point you can preheat your oven to 160 degrees celsius or 320 degrees fahrenheit. Both temperatures should work fine, I've been told. Next I cut the onions into quarters because that seemed appropriate for a stew. Then I moved to the stove and used my cast iron casserole, which may look like the way too expensive French one, but is actually from Turkey and strangely it seems to work perfectly fine for costing a fraction. Of the real one. I'll add some olive oil and set the temperature to high heat. Once it reached the smoking point of the oil, I quickly added the meat. I gave the meat a roasting from all sides and threw in the onions and the twigs of thyme. Now in hindsight, I maybe should have bundled the twigs together, but more on that later. After some stirring, the onions had browned a bit and I deglazed with the stock. I unceremoniously added the marinade, once again forgetting that I might have to fish out the bay leaves and cloves, but more on that later. Then it was time to stir in the tomato paste. Close the lid and move it to the preheated oven. I realized that the casserole had become quite hot, so next time I might consider oven mitts. I also stuck a spoon into the door to let the steam escape. Now the stifado has to stew for around an hour to an hour and a half. Give it a stir around the 30 minutes mark. While the stifado is in the oven, you can maybe make a salad and prepare the pasta. We chose some kriteraki, also known as orzo or risoni, which looks like larger rice grains but is made like most pasta from semolina, which is a durum wheat flour. After an hour I tried a piece of meat and it was soft and almost fell apart, so I moved the casserole back to the stove for final seasoning. Now the moment of truth arrived, where I had to remove all the thyme branches and the bay leaves and cloves, which was a bit tedious. I should have just used a tea egg and put them in there, like in the Rotkraut video. Oh well, I managed to remove all the pieces eventually and could move on. I seasoned with salt and pepper to taste. I felt like I had to thicken the sauce a bit, so I added a couple of teaspoons of cornstarch dissolved in cold water. I let the temperature rise until it boiled for a minute and it thickened nicely. Already came the time to plate up. I had painstakingly plucked a couple of thyme leaves while waiting for the stifado, but they added a nice bit of fresh flavor and looked pretty. So that's it? Now while neither my wife nor I are fans of, you know, the sort of stronger gamey tasting meat, we both enjoyed the lamb stifado tremendously. If you are the same and made your way around lamb so far, then give this a try maybe. Well, I hope you enjoyed this and maybe I'll see you next time if you want to hear another tale.